here, ready to predict our first Saudi show in a year and a half, since February 2020, I believe. And we're here to predict Crown Jewel, and I can't do it alone. So I am bringing on my partner in crime, the one and only. What's up, Skylar? Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> she has new color hair, guys. If you go back to every video, I just have different colored hair. Yeah, so if you go between this channel and then, like, Can We Talk Trusting channel, it's, like, all different hair colors of Skylar. It's just the evolution of color. This is how I can keep track on how life is going. There you go. That's a good one. <laughs> so we have nine interesting, wonderful matches. But I will say this. So a lot of people are saying that this is the best Saudi card that we've had in since they started this partnership in April 2018, my junior year of high school, where I did <laughs> watch it in school. I had my phone in my pocket, my headphones on in every single class. I was like, okay, I'm going to prop my phone right here and I'm going to watch the preview. What do you think of the card before we get into all the matches? Uh, too long. <laughs> Nine matches. matches. Nine matches and at least three of them are going to go over uh, how long they should be. That's if WWE books it right. And with their booking... You're not going to book it right. Well, we'll get into timing when we get to Queen's Crown, because I know me and you are both very passionate about this tournament, how wrong they did it. But let's start with the homeboy himself, Mansoor versus Mustafa Ali. So for me, just the Muslim community, this is a huge match for them. Yes. Because I believe this is the first time two Muslim wrestlers wrestled each other in a country that follows that religion. This is huge. And even just a WWE ring. Exactly. He said that. He was like, this is the first time two Muslims are versing each other in a WWE ring, which is tremendous. This first of many firsts ever yeah. crown jewel. Um, you know, I have a lot of friends that are Muslim. My best friends are Muslim. So this is actually really cool for me too. But I'm going to go with the hometown boy, Mansoor. He's not lost at this pay-per-view since they've made the Saudi show's pay-per-view. I see really good things for him moving to SmackDown. I really see them using him a lot because, you know, he was 49-0 before he moved up to the main roster. I just feel bad for Mustafa because I feel like he's just so talented. They could do so much more with him that they aren't doing, which is why I was really hoping this tag team would have lasted a little longer. But I guess you had to do what we had to do. I mean, I would have even put them against... R RK bro and have them win the tag titles. I thought that would have been extra cool too for just the hometown stuff. But I'm going with Mansoor. Are we in agreement as we start this wonderful prediction show? Oh, thank I you. I am in agreement because he is the hometown boy. He is undefeated at Saudi. Um, I know Mustafa would probably be okay putting him over because it's a big thing for the community and stuff. But I agree. Mustafa should do a lot more. He's so talented. He can do so many stunts that they're probably like, that's too dangerous. And I I, I, I think uh, Mustafa is like a main event guy. He should be going for a title. I think we, know we need another small guy. Like after Big E. <laughs> after someone defeats Big E, then we got uh, uh, Mustafa to go for it. Because he just, small men can bring in. My friends who don't watch wrestling love Mustafa because he's so entertaining. So, yeah. And I think Mansoor is going to do good on SmackDown as well. I think he's going to probably capture, was it, United, uh, the IC title. The IC title. I think he'll capture it in like a couple months. I will also say, guys, Intercontinental Championship hasn't been defended since WrestleMania on a pay per view. Here we are, another pay per view without the title being defended. Way to go. Who is the champion? <laughs> Nakamura. <laughs> Who do you think the champion was? No idea. It was I Cruz. Think, yeah, it was, I know it was Cruz. And then he lost it to Nakamura. And now Cruz is doing whatever on Raw with Dabakato. Dude, I Cruz needs to go. <laughs> no, this character needs to go. I mean, he's not on this pay per view either. Yeah, it's fine. He just needs to go. Oh, wow. Wow. You're just like, oh, get fired. I will also say Mansoor's promo last night was also pretty good, too. Like, I, you just see the aggression. It's like, yes, this is what we need. Yes. Show me more of this, Mansoor. Yes. But from one history to another, we have the first Queen's Crown tournament that no match has gone over three minutes. I'll let you talk about that. It's so frustrating because this is supposed to, like, 
show how the woman, like the woman's division, you know, this is the first time we ever got Queen's crown. Um, I just think it should just be called Queen of the Ring. I don't know why they got to separate oh, that. Me too. I agree. That, it's an extra syllable we don't need. And um, it was supposed to showcase the women. You know, it's the first for the women. And they're literally like, screw them. You know, it's just mid Carters, wrestlers. And it's just like, ugh, it just frustrates me. And it sucks because they had people who couldn't even go to Saudi in the tournament when they have more women in their division that they can showcase. Or and even you could have put someone from NXT in here too if you didn't want to go with that. Why wasn't Shotzi in it? Why wasn't Tegan in it? Mia Yim. Mia Yim, exactly. It's Aaliyah. I know like the brand, the draft. brand didn't, the draft doesn't start until after Saudi, which was stupid. Why not just do it after Saudi? Anyway, um, I, I like that it's going to be Zelina versus because they had a good uh, match in 2019 with the World Collide uh, pay-per-view. Well, not pay-per-view. It was like a special. Special. NXT special. And I think Zelina should win because that would be great for her character. She can pull it out so off. Dewdrop just has this bubbly character. Don't want... I mean, she should just go back to Niven because I hate the name Dewdrop. Queen Dewdrop will sound horrible because it's a horrible phrasing. It's a horrible meaning of a word. But... Zelina Vega can can make this character something. She's just she has that confidence to do it. She can she, uh, she needs to do something. They need to do something with her and give her that crown. So I'll touch back to the time restraint and stuff. So obviously this tournament, I believe someone calculated the total time for all the matches has not even gone to 12 minutes, which is upsetting. I'm really hoping Thursday they give this match a really long time because of the fact that they couldn't have really long matches on Raw or SmackDown for whatever reason. But I'll say something that Marie and I were talking about too. Like this tournament has been rumored for three years mm-hmm. and everyone was looking forward to it. And especially like the finals are going to be at Saudi. So you're already guaranteeing two women's matches in a country that doesn't necessarily have a lot of rights for women. So this is a, such a big deal. And how as a fan can I take this tournament seriously if you're not taking it ser- seriously? Like, WWE has definitely gone backwards with this whole women's revolution thing, and it sucks because you see all these other companies, and I'm not comparing, but, like, you see all these other companies either rebranding their women's division or the woman being that vocal point, like, Ring of, like, I'm not being biased, my say is, like, Ring of Honor is rebranding their whole women's division. Mm-hmm. And they have such a strong division. Impact, the strongest thing Impact has right now is that women's division. Deanna is literally carrying Impact on her freaking back. And you're getting the Iconics. Exactly. Well, the inspiration. And they're going to beat the K. Spoiler for my video about my impact predictions. But (laughs) if all of these other companies can do it and you're supposed to be the A show or the number one show, how am I going to take you seriously if you can't even do what everybody else is doing? With that being said, (laughs) um, I'm excited that Zelina is in the finals. I was really hoping she'd make it far in the tournament, even though the brackets for me were a little weak, meaning that I would have done a lot of things differently. Like, to me, I would have made, even though Tony can't go to Saudi, I would have made her go a little bit farther. Um, I would have maybe put other people in the tournament. Liv Morgan would have been in my finals. I mean, come on, WWE, what are you doing here? She got over herself, and they don't want her to be over. Swear to God. Become all elite, I'm telling you. Yeah. Me and Bill said this. We will trade Liv Morgan for Brian Cage. Brian Cage could go to AEW. Yes. Liv Morgan could go to AEW. We'll trade you. Yes, I agree. <laughs> so with that being said, I'm going to go with Zelina Vega. I feel like she needs it more, even though like you can make the argument for Dewdrop, like, oh, she just debuted. Like, what a great first year on the main roster. But I feel like Dewdrop is really going to be something for the Raw Women's roster. I definitely think I could see her definitely maybe not winning the Rumble because I heard a very interesting rumor about the Royal Rumble this morning that Natalia is supposed to win the, Royal, the Women's Royal Rumble. And I was like, I'm okay with that. I was like, oh, okay, I can do this. Like, yeah. I like that. But I definitely see Dewdrop, like, being a main focal point for that Raw Women's roster in 2022. So I feel like the loss wouldn't hurt her. And because they haven't really used Alina as much, you need to use her before she's the next person to go all elite. Yes, I agree. And from queens to kings, we have a demon. And we have a positive 
human being who's been wanting to win this tournament since 2016, Finn Balor versus Xavier Woods. So I've gone into a lot of arguments with people that have actually picked Finn Balor over Xavier Woods, saying that they, that Finn Balor needs more. I'm uh-huh. not kidding. Uh-huh. No. <laughs> that was my reaction. For me, I get like I can make the argument too. Like you haven't really used Balor since like obviously he was in that feud with Reigns, mm-hmm. but and it would be nice for him to do something since the last time he was on the main roster, you didn't utilize him to the full advantage. But I feel like to me, like the vocal point, like the selling point for me is imagine saying that two out of the three New Day members have won a world title and your third member has won King of the Ring. Mm-hmm. How seriously can you take that trio? Like me and you were both huge Shield fans. Our two oh. favorite wrestlers were in the Shield. Like. The Shield has done a bunch of things, but the Shield hasn't accomplished as much as the New Day does. Mm-hmm. It's in, that would add just so much to the legacy, which is why I'm picking Xavier Woods. I think him as King would be so much more entertaining. On his Twitter, he's literally been sharing notes that he's been running down to 2016 about him winning this tournament, that if he doesn't win, I don't know what's going to happen. I definitely see Balor going after the U.S. title with Priest after this. I think that would be an amazing kickstart feud, and um, and maybe Balor can win the U.S. title and elevate that title again, because I definitely think Balor needs to be the front runner for that mid-card on Raw. So I'm going with Xavier Woods. I am agreeing with you. Xavier is so passionate about this. I think he can k- take that like King character so well without splitting up the New Day. <clears throat> like, like it's just he wants this. I think the passion about it will succeed it so much better than Baron Corbin's. To be honest, also I can't see Finn in that character unless he was heel. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what his character is right now. I don't know if they're going to turn him heel when he goes to Raw. I don't know, but I think Xavier deserves it. He he's just he's just a fan working his dream job, and he's always wanted to be King of the Ring. And if they don't pull up that, it's going to be disastrous. If they don't pull the plug, like pull the trigger sure. on that. The one thing I fear, though, is because I make this argument every time there's like a Money in the Bank or a Royal Rumble or even like a King and Queen of the Ring. Like, I don't want two people to win it on the same brand. And Zelina and Xavier are both going to be on Raw. But I mean, like, everyone. Oh, like, no, it's a new day on SmackDown? No, no, Biggie isn't big. Oh, yeah, Biggie's on Big Raw. Oh, and the other. Oh, never mind. So that's not, never mind. That fixes I was my like, whole. Wait, they separate them again. Okay, wait. So yeah, definitely, Xavier's definitely gonna win because Balor's gonna be on Raw. So yeah, yeah, never mind. <laughs> no, see, I couldn't watch the draft because Lana needed me. I needed to work with Lana. <laughs> I read it all online. I was doing pumpkin carving when the second half was going. I had it on. And then they were like, we can't watch the draft. I was like, but I need to watch the draft. I review things. And they're like, we're not watching the draft. And they put on Law and Order. And then WWE. And then Law is like, oh my God, how's the draft going? I go, I don't know. They made me turn it off. (laughs) I would have loved to sit here and watch it with you. So there's your behind the scene exclusive of what happened at that virtual signing. But from other funny characters, we go to RK Bro versus AJ Styles and Omos. This feud needs to end. Jesus Christ, thank God AJ and Omos are going to the blue brand. I think RK Bro needs to win, obviously, just because of the Raw Tag Team titles. Like, they're not going to bring it to SmackDown. That's the problem with the women's championships, and we'll get there when we get to that triple threat. But I think it's crazy that they were going to split up AJ and Omos in the draft, and everyone was like, please don't do that. Like, Omos isn't ready for that yet. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm really high on Omos. I really think he could be something great. And I definitely think, like, if this... I don't necessarily, I forgot when AJ Styles' is contract expires, but I know like it's coming up soon and that's the last contract he's signing. So I believe it's like the end of 2022. Cool, T. That's been, that's been like reported for like Dude, years. I, I, I don't really read up on AJ. <laughs> oh, right. You don't like AJ. I forgot. <laughs> So I think it'd be re- like not saying that like Omos and AJ like that would be AJ's last match because that would be kind of a letdown. Yeah. But I definitely see like a passing of the torch from AJ to Omos. I think that's really cool. And even though like AJ's had a tremendous WWE run, I like that he's helping the younger guys and being in this tag team because I know like that's not AJ's first goal in WWE. But I'm definitely picking RK Bro. I definitely think that the tag team division on both brands needs to be elevated because that's the one problem I'm seeing in WWE is they don't have a tag team division. They don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. So. 
please new tag teams thank you yes. have a good day wwe um i love rk bro i i like i said i've always said not a fan of riddle but this has elevated his character so much working with randy and they work together so well um again i also agree this feed needs to end I, thank god they are going to smackdown um I am also high on Omos because he can be very serious, but he also has that little like comedy to him, which I feel like every wrestler should have because that's just entertainment right there. Um, him and AJ work really well together. Like you never would have thought this would actually come out something good, but hmm, sorry, it's been a long day already. <laughs> and so I, they're not going to win because again, raw tag titles um but they're gonna go over there probably aj's probably gonna feud with roman i feel you think they're gonna break up aj and almost no so you're just gonna go after reigns yeah hmm, i don't think aj's gonna win mm-hmm. but like i think that'd be interesting with omas with like against the usos on aj's corner and everything i like that i mean i well not tlc they got rid of tlc maybe the, the new year's uh, New Year's Day, whatever they're calling that, yeah. maybe January 1st. Part one, part two. Yeah. I'm so mad they got rid of TLC. Next, we're going to get rid of Extreme Rules and Hell in a Cell, and we're going to have so many boring pay-per-views. Because no. they were really boring enough. I mean, I don't... So, my thing is, is now you have two pay-per-views in January, which I find kind of pointless, because, like, the biggest thing in January is the Royal Rumble, because, you know, it's a kickstart to Mania. Yeah. So, I don't... So, I'm kind of upset about that, but, I mean... I'm not too upset about them getting rid of TLC because it gives like all of us a break in December to kind of be like, okay, we can breathe. Because well, the New Year's, it's going to be in December. No, it's January 1st. No, they're having part two. They're having two parts. They're doing New Year's I, Eve, New Year's Day. I heard it was only one. Oh, that's a problem. I was supposed to go to Vegas that weekend. Yeah, remember, it says a lot of people are like, uh, part one, New Year's Day. Like, they have a part one. Swear to God. I need to research photos. this. If I find over. a photo, I'll send it to you. Yes, I mean, we're going to do this when this is over. So that's interesting. I kind of don't like that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know. I don't like that. I hope it's, they change that. Yeah, it, it's weird. I don't know. Nope. They might. They might. I. That's just what everyone's been calling it. A part one kind of thing. And I know, it, well, AEW did that. New Year's Smash. It was two weeks. Yeah, but, but it was, it was supposed a pay-per-view. To... No, I know it was a special, but I'm just saying, like, it was also, like, a part one, part two, and the only reason that both were in January was because that last Dynamite was the Brody Lee tribute. Yeah. I don't know. That is weird. I don't like that. You know what else is weird? The fact that Seth Rollins is another Hell in a Cell match. <laughs> and just leave it after. <laughs> well, okay, so you, you could go first, because I need some time, and I want everyone's opinion on this match. I need time. <laughs> I'm excited for it. I think it'd be really cool. Um, hopefully they don't do red lights like they always do with this fucking Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. They ruined my favorite pay-per-view. Hell in a Cell's my favorite. Should I don't care that it's in October. The whole pay-per-view should be in October. And this match, this pay-per-view should be like in the summer. They sort of switched it because it's my birthday month and I want Hell in a Cell. Okay. Over <laughs> that rant. <laughs> my birthday's in August. I get summer slim. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, <laughs> I'm excited for this match. Edge hasn't really been in any. Mm-hmm. Um, Rollins is technically a pro at it. He's a veteran. There's the word. Not um, a pro. Not a pro. No, he's a veteran. And I think, well, Edge won the last two, right? So, in their feud, it's 1-1. One, one. This is a grudge. Oh. So. Rollins beat him like, at the SmackDown at the Garden. Yeah, yeah. Beat him um, I think Rollins is going to win. Because also, Edge is going to Raw. So, it's Rollins. Oh, shit. You're right. Wow, we're never going to read this feud. Um, I think Seth Rollins is going to win. Edge is going to take a couple time, a couple uh, time, time off. And then start a different feud. Come back to each other because they think this is going to be the best. This is going to be like a Randy Orton versus John Cena nine matches in one year kind of thing. Um, 
But yeah, Rollins is gonna win. Hopefully, no one gets hurt. <laughs> Why you gotta throw that in the universe? Because it's in my brain. That <laughs> someone... Because you have someone with a bad neck who hasn't been like I know he's done like the matches with Randy, but like it hasn't done a Hell in a Cell or Steel Cage match in a while. Okay. And, yeah, and then Rollins is usually good, but it's just I, I'm a concerned person. So you're either saying Rollins is going to get hurt or Rollins is going to hurt Edge. No, I'm just saying I don't want anyone to get hurt in case accidents happen. Wow, you're really throwing that into the universe. So on Thursday, if something happens during this match, I'm going to text you. I'm going to be like, guess what? Someone got hurt. I look at well, my therapy appointment. Oh, okay, therapist. Here's another problem going on today. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So I, I was quite torn with this match. Obviously, yeah. what else is new? So I don't see Ed, So my only problem is I don't see Edge taking time off no. after this. Just because I feel like he just came back in June. And he's not technically a part-timer. He's technically a full-time wrestler, which is why he got drafted. But he's also only schedule a couple matches throughout the year yes but since i just feel like they would have waited for him to get drafted if he was leaving true i'm not saying he's going to go after big e on monday that is not going to happen but i don't see him leaving because i do see him involved in the five on five survivor series match because that's the next pay-per-view oh god it's already next month already Oh my god, that means Edge and Rollins are going to be on the same team. Huh. Can we coexist? WWE's favorite question. Can we coexist? Oh my god, please. So, because of that, and also because I do see this being the last match, I don't see them extending this feud because this is, like, this is the perfect way to end the feud. I really wish that this match would have been at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, but I can understand why they didn't do that because they want to give the Saudi fans a Hell in a Cell match. Um, I... I don't know because you pick Seth, but I, I just see Edge winning. I don't, this is just not the year for Seth Rollins to win a pay per view. He, you know, how many pay per views he's won? One. <laughs> this is horrible. So I'm going to pick Edge. I'm probably going to regret it. I, I think this match is going to be good. I mean, I have another match that's going to be a sleeper on the card that we'll get to when we get to it. But I think this match is going to be really good. I trust Seth to protect Edge with his neck because even at the match at the Garden, like, he attacked his neck yeah. a lot and, like, Edge is perfectly fine. Like, you know, I do love this feud. I think Rollins obnoxiously, like, going to Edge's house is the funniest thing oh, ever. I, I, that is so iconic. And he's like, <sighs> orange juice and an apple i was like yes king you're like you king king shit disgusting <laughs> hey let, let, orange he's... juice and apple the most citrus disgusting thing ever listen he probably didn't have a lot of options you know i don't know what i don't know what's in that house but i think seth has done a tremendous job i think his character definitely has gone over i mean even when i worked with lita this past weekend like she highly talked about like how good seth's character is oh, yeah. And, I'm, and she's just not saying that because she's really close with Becky and Seth. Like, she's saying it because she needs it. Um, but I'm going to pick Edge, and I just really hope that uh, Rollins bounces back. History, ladies and gents. History. Because I didn't cry. Oh, I have to tell yeah. Bill that. I'm going to be like, I picked against Seth, and I didn't cry. Because on the SummerSlam predictions, like, we started with the Rollins-Edge match, and he's just like, Kimmy's going to cry. Kimmy's going to cry. Can't wait to see Kimmy cry. And I was like, you know, sir. No, because my argument is every time I'm on a panel with Bill, Rollins has to, like, Rollins always loses. So it's Bill's fault. But tonight, he's not on the panel. So I'm like, hmm, maybe Rollins is going to win. But I don't know. But I'm picking Edge, and I'm just going to cry and hope that this is the last Hell of a Sun match that Rollins is ever in. So. But now we go from Hell in a Cell to no DQ because we got Bobby Lashley versus Goldberg. I'll, I'll, so I'll start because I know you don't like either one of these people. <laughs> uh, so I think this is quite interesting. I think the fact that this feud is entirely about parenthood. They're fighting over who's a better father. And that's just so funny to me that these two could like these two have very like similar like 
oh, they were at the top of their game in like another profession and they both got hurt and then turned to WWE. Like there's so much you could do with this dude that you're just not doing. And I'm just like, wow, like let's fight about fatherhood. Okay. Oh my God. But since this, I believe, yeah, so Goldberg does not have to wrestle another match for the year 2021. So because of that, I'm going to go with Goldberg. I think that, not that he needs it more, but just like Bobby could bounce back. I can definitely see Bobby going after Big E at TLC. I think that would be like kind of interesting. Mm. MVP, you know, they could do something with that. But I'm going to go with Goldberg. I just hope that Goldberg doesn't get hurt or like anything because his track record at Saudi Arabia is not the best of the records. So I'm going to go with Goldberg and hope that Bobby takes very good care of him. Yes. What do you think? Um, This match should never happen. <laughs> I'm being nice. I will never be nice. Um, you all call me a heel Jesus. It, it's a money grabber match, I get. But it's also blood money match, so I don't get. Um, Goldberg should not wrestle anymore. He's injured himself. He's almost injured Undertaker. He is too old for this. Too old has so much ring rust he will never get rid of he's gonna win because it's Saudi and it's stupid Bobby just he'll bounce back I don't want him for the title again because he can do so much more with her business I, uh, <laughs> this match just gets me so upset because it's so it's a it's a no DQ like someone's getting hurt someone unintentionally is getting hurt because what is with you and people getting hurt on this pay-per-view? Because it's been in my mind lately. <laughs> That's been on your mind? Hey, guys, well, we're going to have this pay-per-view. Someone's going to get hurt. It happens. Someone always gets hurt at Saudi. And there's talk- a bunch of other things that happen there, too, but we're not oh, going to yeah. talk about that. Yeah, but someone in WWE always gets hurt. It's always one match. It's always, it's always the old-timers match. It always is. I'm, it's a fact, but I, I, but anyway, Goldberg's going to win. It's going to be really, either really fast or really boring or both. I'm gonna and go they have no purpose except for money grabbing. Thank you. <laughs> so the, so the next match is my sleeper match. It's Biggie and Drew McIntyre. Because I, I actually think, like, that, like they've done a really good job, even though they've done the whole, like, oh, my God, can we be on the same page? Oh, I actually think that these two can produce a really good match. I believe this is one of the first times that they're actually wrestling each other, mm-hmm. which is why I'm actually really invested in it. And Biggie and Drew, I feel like, could just have a good match with anybody. So this, to me, is a sleeper, even though, like, Ronald and Edge, like, not only self, like, biasly, but I just feel like they're going to have the best match on the card, but it's not, like, Biggie and Drew. But since Drew is going to SmackDown, hopefully for a heel turn, I am going to go with Biggie. It does not make sense for him to lose the title, meaning he just won it. You could do so much with him for with this title. I really hope that he holds it till Mania. Again, not selfishly, because I'm probably going to that Mania, but just because, like, I feel like there's so much you could do. I just want to see what his character is like on the road to WrestleMania. I think it's going to be really funny. And I just love, too, my favorite thing is that so many people have said, like, oh, you can't take Biggie seriously with a world championship. He has to change his character. But, like, look, he's literally, like, the number one guy on Raw right now. Mm-hmm. But how many people is he literally proving wrong? Okay. So, I'm going to go with Biggie. I agree. Um, I hate the whole buildup. Honestly, I do not like the whole buildup with it. I hate the coexisting thing because it happened so many times. And, but I think Biggie deserves to be champion for a long time. He's, I don't like, like I said, you can be funny and be taken seriously in this company as long as they do it right. And they're doing it right with Biggie. Like, he's, I, I think he deserves a championship for a long time and not lose it early in his run. Um, Drew McIntyre is going to go SmackDown. He's going to go straight after Roman as soon as he goes. Um, if he loses, he's turning heel. Um, he'll turn. Losing, he's turning heel. Um, yeah, Big E's going to win. I'm going to be happy. And I don't know who he's going to verse after. Probably Bobby after all this. Probably not. Who knows? Seth Rollins. Maybe. <laughs> 
it's one of these things you don't know because it is the draft and everything. So you don't know who's going to go after each other. I just know SmackDown because everyone's going to go after. It's been heavily, like, everyone's going to want Drew versus Roman, the first chance they can get. Actually, you know who Biggie should wrestle? Who? Owens. Who? Kevin Owens. Ooh. Because Ooh. when... So long-term storytelling, if they're going to tell it this way, which they're not. Like, remember when Biggie like, wasn't in the New Day? for Like, I think he was hurt or oh, something. Yeah. And then they replaced him with Kevin Owens, and he was Big O. They're going to forget about that. <laughs> I Apparently, I need to remember this. But I think that'd be really interesting if they did that. Yeah. Like, I think that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, he's getting the Dean Ambrose treatment because he's leaving soon. Well, I mean... So his contract, I believe, is up in either January or December. I get him and Johnny confused. So if I were the WWE trying to keep Kevin Owens in the company, mm-hmm. I would either do that as your first feud or have Owens in the Rumble and have that match Mania. Mm. Mm. And have him win the title there. I would like that. I would like that. But they're not into um, planning stuff early. So he's leaving. <laughs> Listen, I'm on a creative team right now, WWE. If you want me to be on yours, I will gratefully sign that contract. Do it. She she's better than half of you. I mean, that's not way. That's not a way to get you in. I'm sorry. Hey, I mean, you're not the first one to say that, but whatever. Let's move on to our second women's match: Becky versus Bianca versus Sasha. And I don't know why, like, I've had such a feeling, like, I don't know, because maybe they put Charlotte in this feud for no reason. Like, I thought they were going to add Charlotte to this match. The t- that, that title's not being defended. There's a lot of titles not being defended. The U.S. title, the IC title, the SmackDown Tag Team Champion, uh, Tag Team Championships. Like, they don't care as long as they have what's going to make people in Saudi happy and not get killed. So this is interesting to me because I think there's a reason for like both like Becky or Sasha to win, especially because Becky is heading to the red brand and Charlotte's heading to the blue brand. And I personally don't want them to do a trade off of like the titles like they did last year at the draft with the tag team championships. They are. Oh, I know. Like, to me, what would be kind of interesting, so I don't necessarily know. So I'm not holding out hope that, like, oh, like, something's going to happen as they're traveling to Kansas City for SmackDown. But I'm just under the impersonation, like, half the roster's not going to be at that SmackDown. No. Because the flight's, like, 23 hours. I looked it up. (laughs) Yeah. So I think it'd be cool on Monday. I mean, I'm going to regret saying this. If they maybe either unified the titles or did something. Do not unify it. Do yeah, not. I said I was going to regret it. Do not unify it, please. I'd rather trade off than unify. Hey, I mean, that was a part of the rumor, too, with the Natalia winning the Royal Rumble, that she was going to win both the Raw and SmackDown Women's Championships. <laughs> Yo, you unify that, you're even putting that, cha- you're putting that division even back further. Because it's like the whole, like, Divas Championship when it unified. I think that was, that's the most stupidest thing. You want to, like, it's just, like, Huh, then do if you're gonna unify something, just use your tag team division. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um I'm hmm, let's see, I didn't pick her husband, but I'm gonna pick her. I'm gonna pick Becky. I think it makes the most sense for Becky to win. She's really over. And yeah. I feel like the Saudi crowd's gonna love her. So I'm gonna go with Becky. I agree. I, I think uh well Belair's moving to Raw, so she's not winning it. Unless it's how to do the trade off. I don't know, but, and Sasha, I think she's going to feud again with Charlotte over SmackDown. I think they're going to have a nice feud again, and Becky is just going to take it all, because she's the queen, and we have matching hair now. The big time bets. I hate that monarch. I miss the man. And I know our final match. It's your favorite match. Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. So I'm going to ask you two questions. Who do you think is going to win? And who, by the end of the night, do you think Paul Heyman is aligning with? Roman or Brock? Here's the thing. I'm actually pretty excited for this match. This has actually been a very entertaining thing. (laughs) Faith Lesnar, best Lesnar. Ponytail Lesnar, elite. Um, (laughs) I think Roman's going to win. 
And I think the Usos are going to turn on uh, Roman. Oh! I think they're the ones um, who are uh, kind of pretending to be Paul to talking to Brock or just one of them. And they're getting they're getting in there. Or someone's pretending to be Paul Heyman. I don't know who, but I feel like it's someone is pretending. I haven't seen anyone say that. I I I I don't think it's actually Paul doing it. I think it's someone pretending. And that's why Brock's always like, it's Paul. Paul's doing this. Paul showed me this. So I think someone's trying to get in the head of all of them. And it's either inside the bloodline or it's someone trying to take out the bloodline. Probably not going to happen because it's too good. <laughs> and it's actually a very genius thing I actually came up with. But I, 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 I think that's going to happen. Who would you pick, Reigns or Lesnar? Uh, Reigns. Hmm. So I also picked Reigns. So I think it's interesting that Lesnar is a free agent. I think that definitely plays into this match, but I've always, like, Brock's always been a free agent, so I don't, under, like, that's the other thing, too. Like, people made it such a big deal. Brock has never been assigned a brand. No. Since I restarted the draft in 2016, Brock has always been a free agent. Mm-hmm. So this ain't that big of a deal. I see, I think Paul is going to align with Brock. To me, like, it's weird. I just, because I know, like, Paul, de- like, does all this with Brock in real life. Like, you think, like, this whole manager thing's just a storyline-wise? No, that's what he does in real freaking life. Like, this like this is what they yeah. do. And to me, I know that Brock's going away for a while after this. He's not going to be back to the Rumble because he's on the front of that poster. And that definitely means that, not saying he's going to win the Rumble because he definitely doesn't need it. But that definitely means he's going to have a big match at Mania, especially because it's an at and Stadium. I don't see... I can picture Reign without Heyman. I can't picture Brock without Heyman. Yeah. And I feel like even though like Brock's been very funny on the mic without him, and this is basically like a I don't give a fuck type of Brock Lesnar, which is something different that we've seen since he's come back in 2012. I definitely see Brock and Heyman going back together. There's just, I don't know. There's just something about the two of them together that I just can't see. I'm not saying that Heyman's going to screw Reigns over because obviously I just picked Reigns to win the match, but I'm going to pick Reigns just because I feel like it's too early for, to take the title off him, and especially because now he is really becoming the number one guy in WWE. You don't want to take the title off him, especially when the bloodline is literally the top thing you have. It's the only thing you have. Yes. Let's rephrase that. It's the only thing you have, WWE. <laughs> But I think the thing for me, and I forgot what, what panel I, we brought this up on, you're running out of people to wrestle Reigns. Or not like you're running out of people to wrestle Reigns, you're running out of viable contenders that make sense for Reigns to lose the title to. I think that was the one I was on with uh, Rob and... Mike. Oh, you were on that one. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Because I remember, I remember we were all agreeing that it's just, he's... It, who's going to take it off of him? There's no one. Not even Drew McIntyre can take that off of him. Exactly. No one's on the same t- like tire as him. Like they just renamed Keith Lee as Bearcat. He's not on the same tire anymore. I'm sorry. I love Keith, <clears throat> but you rename him unless you really make him dangerous. There's no one on the tire for him. Well, I was confused with that. Just because they said like Bearcat Lee, like that's what the um mm-hmm. graphic said. But they called him Keith Lee on commentary. So I was like, are you renaming him? Or like, <sighs> I don't know. They got nothing. I they mean, got all, nothing. they're repackaging Cross again. Did you see that they're repackaging? But Cross. They're not getting rid of the mask, and they're not mm-hmm. bringing up Scarlet. Scarlet is the main puzzle piece in that whole equation. Listen, Adam Cole did not lie in his promo. <laughs> I think I met. I feel like I memorized the whole thing. Like they they gave you the fancy lights, they give you the smoke, they get you the girl. They make everything, they give you everything to make you feel special. You know what Adam Cole, they give Adam Cole to make him feel special. You ring the goddamn freaking bell. Mm -hmm. This is how obsessed I am with this product. Like, thank you. Thank you for giving me a life. (laughs) Um, But that's like NXT. Huh, NXT 2.0. Hey, you know, Braun Breaker. I'll give a little preview for my NXT Halloween Havoc predictions. I hope Braun Breaker beats Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah. Yeah, I like him. He's a good dude. Yeah. I watched the first episode back and I was so confused and my brain hurt. I couldn't watch it after that because I, I, I can't remember all these new people who are too big and too slow. Anyway. Are you, is Mandy Rose in that equation too? She got faster. 
she actually got entertaining not the overly t- spray tan that she's using it makes her look black in photos which is horrible but i like the brunette she's got lighten up her skin a little bit but i like the brunette i like her the toxic attraction i like that she's a leader i know this is totally off of saudi but i actually am enjoying her for the first time since she debuted she, her knee still needs work her knee attack still needs work but besides that she's actually getting faster in the ring i think going back to nxt helped her anyway <laughs> Listen, I'm just happy. I'm just going to be excited when Ivy wins the NXT Women's Championship. She's so good. Home. Oh, she's my new crush. She's so good. Like Marina, <laughs> like I'm strong. Like Maria Shafir and I had this whole conversation because I was like, I want your real opinion. And she goes, No, I love her. You're going to really like her. She's really good. And we watched that first match and go, oh My God, she was right. <laughs> she's so good. She's so tiny, but she can. She can murder me if she wants. She's my height. I love her. I really went. I went on Instagram. I was like, "Oh, my new crush." That's it. I, I love Ivy, muscles. Ivy for NXT Women's Champion. Whether she beats Raquel Gonzalez or Mandy Rose, hopefully Raquel gets Kaya. Who? Kaya Valkyrie. Uh, oh, Monet. She's she's on the outs. She's leaving already. Well, me and Bill have this theory. <laughs> Me and Bill are like, what do we say? Because she's not like being used as she should. And I feel like she's very frustrated Mm -hmm. because she should have been given this title months ago, to be honest. Oh, 100%. And then when she was getting her shot, they changed the whole thing. Exactly. So me and Bill feel like she's just very frustrated and she's going to be one of the next people to become all lead. Also because NXT really doesn't fit her. No, I feel like AEW or like Impact fit her very well, which is why she was one of the main people in Impact. But I feel like in AEW, she'd be like, oh my God. I mean, I feel like she'd be a good match against Britt. No. Listen, I'm just excited. We're finally getting Ty Conti and Britt Baker. I could die happily tomorrow. Yes. You don't know. I've, I think I've sat on AEW panels, like five AEW panels. And I'm like, you know, I think the next papers are going to give us Ty Conti and NJ. I said that for five straight panels and we're finally getting it. So I can die happy tomorrow so happy but anyway said see that was more interesting than the crown jewel card yeah so that's our crown jewel prediction so i'll let you do your shameless promo first because i'm gonna sit here for 10 hours okay so (laughs) me on instagram and twitter uh skylar under dash under dash under dash nicole um this saturday i'll be in albany for legend uh showcase of legends um with Damage 365 promotions with Tito Santana. I'm texting him right now. <laughs> um, but I'll be there and then I'll be there in I'll be in big event in November the 13th and then showcase of legend six in Albany as well. So I'm actually working and it's amazing. I actually have stuff to promote. So I'm proud cool. of you. Thank you. That's my stuff. Over to you, Kimmy. Oh my god. My Ring of Honor shirt shipped. Thank god. I finally got my Roxy shirt. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Kimmy. So you can follow me here on the No Hold Bar Network. You know, me and Tiff do a bunch of stuff. Tiff has her indie folks and other the roast where she's following everything independent, scene, interviews, vlogs. She actually put up her vlog from the GCW show that you went to. Shyla. What happened? Put up a vlog from the GCW show that you went to. She vlogged her day. Did she? Yeah. So you should go I check that out. By the way, best night of my life. Just I forgot that was the last time I saw. Best night ever. Hey, listen, Lita asked me about that show, and I was like, Yeah, I'm the wrong. I just person. thought you talked about me. I did. I said my best friend went to that show, and she said it was the best night of her life. <laughs> we talked all about GCW. I was like, I feel so weird. But okay. Next time, call me or FaceTime me and be like, we were, talking about, we were talking about Effie. We were mainly talking about Effie and Nick Gage. I that was our conversation. Effie. I could have met him. I'm so mad. One I day. Need a, I need a wrestling his gay shirt now. I need so, to represent my brand. <laughs> yes. So make sure to check out the Hold Bar Network. I got you covered for WWE, NXT, AEW. Um, we'll have our Bound for Glory predictions. I'll do that. I'm just, like I said on my Raw review, I'm just waiting for the Digital Media Championship um, brackets to come to an end so I can, you know, fully predict that match because I need to know who the other two girls are. And I'm really, Chelsea Green, please. 
that's my girl right there. <laughs> or Madison Green. Actually, all my like all the people I work with are in this match. So I'm this is just a no win for me. So check out that. Um also uh I'm on the BCP this week, so I'm probably gonna put this up in a little bit. So tonight at nine o'clock, we're predicting Crown Jewel. Um finally on there with Ella J. I am so excited. She does so many things with Gaul and just she was one of the people who did the PWI Women's 150. So I'm really excited to finally podcast with her. <laughs> We've been trying for so long. So make sure to check out that at nine o'clock. Um, but oh by the way, who's your pick for number one? We were debating this for PWI. Yeah, was, that's the wrong answer. Who's number one? Oh, I mean, I'm stuck between her and, and Deanna. Deanna. Just because like, they're both up. They should be tied. No. They did that. They did that already. But no, it's going to be bright. Um, So make sure to check that out. And then we're predicting I can see Halloween Havoc. I don't know when. I was told Thursday, but now that day might be changed, so I don't know. So look out for that. I have an article on thepubbreak.com where you talk all about one of the wrestling reboot, all the things you need to know, all the information that we know as of right now. And also I'm coming out with an article talking about how women's division, how WWE's women's division is slowly going backwards. Um, also for me, uh, if you're in the New York area, make sure to check out Warriors of Wrestling, Intergender Warfare, November 13th. It's a local indie promotion in Staten Island that I'm actually currently working for. I'm on their creative team now. Really exciting things. <laughs> I somewhat know what I'm talking about. I don't know. <laughs> so make sure to check that out too. As far as virtual signings and stuff for me, SoCal Val on Friday night. Super excited. Love that girl. She's absolutely amazing. Um, and of course, big event. You can see me and my girl Maria Canellis. <laughs> reunited so excited okay. yes i'm going to, i'm gonna be like maria <laughs> also um speaking of virtual signings on november 13th we have brooke adams and maria and one of them will be inducting me into the virtual signing hall of fame because if you did not see lita casually inducted me as the first inductee so i need an inductor it's either going to be maria or brooke adams I kind of don't know who it's going to be. We told Maria this morning and Maria just thought that was the funniest thing ever. And she's just really excited to see my speech at this point. So I guess we're going to see how that goes. Um, I think I'm trying to look at like my list of things I do. I have a list on my board at school of just like wrestling work. I love it. That might be it. Well, I'll plug Kyle real quick. So Kyle does Twitch World of Wrestling. I'm currently one of the mega heels there. I'm actually wrestling for the title next week. Yeah. Um, so check that out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash masters of gaming underscore. You can see how really good I am at cutting promos and stuff. But I think that's it for me. I I really need to write all the shit I do down so I don't go like this. Yeah. But uh that's it for me. And that's it for Skylar. And I'll see you guys tomorrow because we're gonna I'm gonna review on XT 2.0 and then we're gonna review well, I'm gonna review Crown Jewel. I might get somebody to help me. Yeah. I might have to call in a friend of me if he can um uh watch the pay-per-view <laughs> i might have to call him mike <laughs> hey mike <laughs> what you thir thursday Hello. night listen i'm gonna give mike a shout out real quick too because he actually helped me with my homework the other day i was like can you please edit this entire thing for me and he was like honestly i met him once and i he's amazing i love him he's a great guy I, i'm so glad you introduced me to him i'm telling you him and him and bill are like up two, yes. and then uh, you'll I'll you, I'll make you meet Kyle I'm gonna make Kyle come out of retirement don't you worry but that's it for me and Skylar and we'll see you all next time we do a panel